Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, and Ascendant. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your August 18th to the 24th, 2024 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out tremendously, so thank you so very much for doing so. And if you're interested in a private reading, check out my website, daneharttarot.com. It's listed in the description box below, and I look forward to reading for you. Now, before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. This cleanse and meditation will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. All right, Gemini, let's see what the tarot has to say. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. Oh, goodness. <laughs> And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. And show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Spirit is quite chatty. Let's make sure you can see everything. I know I have a pile up here at the end. Okay, perfect. Oh, before we turn everything over, let us see what Spirit has to say. And if you're interested in entering to receive a free reading, there are a few things that you have to do. You have to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment with a butterfly so that I know you would like a reading because some people don't and they just like commenting. So thank you so much. But yeah, so if you want a reading, comment with a butterfly. And yeah, a person will be chosen on Sundays. So the announcement will happen on Sunday. So hit the bell notification so you can be notified when that happens. So let's see here, angels and spirit guides. Here we have consistency. I like this. Okay, one of the things that I love in life is consistency. In people, it's, it's one of my favorite things. And so I love that that comes forward for us here, Gemini, because I myself am a Gemini. So I think like, ooh, that's one of my favorite words. Being consistent, being consistent with ourselves, which can be hard as a Gemini because we get so interested in so many different things. Like, oh, I'm going to do this. and Oh, I'm going to do that. And oh, what about this? Being consistent with our work ethic, being consistent with the expectations that we have from others and that we have from ourselves. This week, be consistent with yourself. Be consistent with what you want, with what you're expecting, because you're going to find that it starts to set a pattern. It starts to set a habit that is really quite beautiful for you and really quite, you know, just, just joyous in your heart. So just being aware of that is going to be really important. It moves us to our chakra energy, angels and spirit guides. This is listening reverse. So as a Gemini, we can have this problem. We love to talk. We love to communicate. But if we also couple that with listening, because it makes us better communicators, we become unstoppable. And I do apologize. I have a bit of a sore throat, so do bear with me. And here with listening, it's knowing that we can have a blockage with our throat chakra, which is, you know, it's what Gemini is all about. We're ruled by Mercury. Right now, we're in a Mercury retrograde, so do be mindful about that during this week. 
But we need to listen to ourselves, listen to what our body is saying, not poo poo ourselves, not think, oh, you're just being silly. Oh, you're just being crazy. Oh my gosh, you're just overreacting. Sometimes we can be, you know, the best at just dismissing ourselves and then listening to the world around us. We don't even have to be talking to anybody, but just taking in our existence. That's going to be important. It moves us then to our energy to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. This is the two of wands. So there are going to be certain doors that open to us, certain ways that we think, oh, what about this? What about that? And we can get distracted from what we really want. So be open and honest with yourself with what you want and not just what looks good and flashy and, and kind of sparkly right now. So just being aware of that is going to be important. We are crowned with the Emperor, which is Aries energy time frame, March 21st to April 19th. If we have an Aries in our life, for some reason, they are the main player during this week. If we have Aries in our chart, it's going to be the main player this week. We then have the Five of Cups. The Knight of Cups reverse, interesting. This is Water Sign Energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. We have the Page of Pentacles, Earth Sign Energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We have the Three of Wands. I love the dominoes right here. Everything knocking down, moving forward, you know, kind of like it's like it's set up just perfectly. And that's going to be important for us. And that is important for us. We then have the Ten of Cups. Oh, I love that for you, Gemini. We have the Nine of Cups. I also love that for you. Oh, that's so beautiful. We have the Queen of of swords that's us coming through we're represented by the swords in the minor arcana we're here as a queen which you know it doesn't get better also i love this queen okay makes me think of farney farney mysteries i don't know if you guys have ever seen that i think it was a um australian like kind of cozy mystery book and then it became a tv show and i love those Fryony? i don't remember her name okay the queen of wands i'm gonna stop guessing now. <laughs> the queen of wands is fire sign energy gemini leap no Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So we can have a bit of, of difficulty embracing our magic, seeing our magic, seeing ourselves. You know, we're also going to be a little bit quieter and tend to have quieter energy around us. And then we're going to think like, oh my gosh, how are you ever going to be a big deal? How are you ever going to, you know, get seen or, or get what you want from life? We have the four of pentacles, the knight of wands reverse very interesting that both knights so far are reversed we have the eight of wands reversed we have the king of of wands here and we have the strength card so the strength card also represents leo energy time frame july 23rd to august 22nd it's the time frame that we're in this is and, and just coming out of during this week so this is going to be very good energy for us. We're going to get along quite well with Leo energy. There's also something here about our passion coming forward. Now, if you identify as a man, if you identify as a woman, you identify as a woman, this is going to be a little bit more difficult, okay? Seeing your fire, seeing your tenacity. If you identify as a guy, this is going to be easier for you. You're going to step into your fire, step into your power, but this sacred feminine energy is going to be harder for us to connect with. So just being aware of that, being aware of nurturing our fire, nurturing our passion, we can think that, oh, this the sacred feminine energy of fire is to take care of. Like I always have to be the hearth, the hearth, the the energy that warms and 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 cooks and, and brings things forward. That might not be us. Okay. So looking at our fire and our passion and letting it shine however it manifests in our lives is going to be important the king of wands is using that fire and that passion to walk forward into our existence to embrace what it is that we want to look at the bigger picture of where it is that we're going and that's going to be important here as well that's going to be easier though it's going to be easier to look outward it's going to be harder to look inward for one reason or another we can also have a soulmate connection coming up that we are excuse me i'm going to call <coughs> Oh, excuse me, that we are completely oblivious to. And we can actually start off like not liking this person, being like, wow, I think you're a jerk. Okay, cool. Like I'm moving on from that. So just being aware of this is going to be important as well. With the emperor, embracing your fire, embracing your tenacity, moving forward in very beautiful, very, you know, just expressive, sacred masculine energy and saying, this is me. This is what I want for my life. 
This is how I'm moving forward for me. This is what I'm going after. And not being apologetic, being very firm in what you believe and what you're what you want in your life is going to be a powerful, beautiful thing. Also, if you have Aries energy in in your chart, Aries energy in your life, these people are going to play a pivotal role during this week. But this energy is also going to play a pivotal role in the way that we express ourselves. We're kind of we're we're grabbing our fire, like we're moving forward in our tenacity, in our brilliance, in our connection. We are changing our minds and we're changing our lives. We're changing the way we look at things. We have been stuck in a rut. A lot of us Geminis have been stuck in a rut. And now we're going to be like, oh, wow, look over there. It's like, wow, I didn't know that if I turned around, you know, there'd be this beautiful, like beautiful garden waiting for me, this beautiful connection waiting for me. Our emotions can get out of our hand, out of hand, as can our passions. So just being mindful about that looking at things and also with water sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, we can feel like they're running amok. We can feel like they're just like kind of like emotionally everywhere and emotionally overwhelming. So again, being aware of that is going to be super important. With the page of pentacles, earth sign energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. If we have earth sign energy in our life, they're going to come through as students. If we have earth sign energy in our chart, that part of our personality is going to be teaching us a lot. This is a time to learn. This is a time to take in information. This is a time to see ourselves in a very powerful, beautiful, connective way. But this is a time to say, how am I planting my seeds? How do I want to move forward? Where is it that I want to be? With the three of, of wands, there are doors opening. Big things are coming in. Things are going out. There's a movement of information, a movement of ideas. It's time to focus on our happiness. I love that we have the ten of cups and the ten and the nine of cups leading to us the queen of of swords, looking at this direction, looking in this direction, connecting with all these blessings. The ten of cups is this is my happiness. This is my happiness. This is my joy. This is my connection. This is how I'm moving forward. This is what I love in my life, and this is what I'm going after. It is embracing what makes us happy. We can think, oh my gosh, this is so lame. Oh my gosh, you know, it makes me such a fuddy daddy. Oh, I wish I was cooler. Oh, I wish I was this. Oh, I wish I was that. You know, people who have a lot of friends, they have these hobbies, not these hobbies. No, let yourself fully be you. Let you embrace what makes you happy, what makes you laugh, what brings you joy, what, what puts a smile on your face. Like that's going to be a goal during this week. Every single day, do something that you absolutely love doing. Like do something that brings you joy. It could be going on a walk. It could be, you know, watching a certain thing on television, but do something that raises your energy vibration. So if you watch something on television, no true crime, seriously, daring you guys, no true crime, no murder mysteries, except if they're cozy murder mysteries. I don't know why they can be married, not married, um, why they can be murdered in Cabot Cove and that's fine. Or like Colombo can be on the case and that's fine, but nothing really like CSI, you know, that type of thing. So just being aware of that during this time, that's going to be really important because it's going to raise your energy vibration. With the nine of cups, you are celebrating yourself. You're going to see a wish that you have made across your fingers. Oh, I hope this happens. Wish be granted. And it's going to just start affirming. It's like, oh yeah, I'm in the right direction. Like, oh yeah, I'm doing the right thing. Oh, this is so cool. So that is going to be powerful. It's going to be beautiful for you. And it's embracing your voice. It's embracing what you want. It's looking forward. But we can also like just be a little bit harsh on ourselves as well. We need to stand in the power of our voice and not care, Gemini, if people think we're witchy or not. You know, if people get us or they don't. If we can sit there and say like, okay, that's your problem. But it doesn't mean that we're being combative. It's not saying it's like, it's your problem. And you know, when you say that, sometimes you're like, you're ready for a fight. It's like, no, that's not me. That's what I'm focusing on in my life. I need to move forward for me. I have a lot of responsibilities. I have a lot of things I need to get done. I need to focus on moving forward in this energy for me, cutting through the the negativity, the poison, the hurt, the you know slaying of dragons in my world in order to keep achieving and succeeding. That is going to be so important during this time. We're going to have roadblocks thrown in our way around embracing our voice, around saying what needs to be said. People can make us feel guilty about saying certain things or, you know, like voicing our opinion or voicing or giving ourselves a voice and not just falling into line. So just be mindful about this. With the Queen of Wands reverse, there is a sense here of like, can I embrace my passion? Can I embrace my fire? 
what if I don't fit in like everybody else? And there's vampiric energy with the four of, of pentacles where it's like, I feel drained. I feel overwhelmed. I don't know if I have any magic in me. I don't know if I have that certain spark that makes some people succeed and some people don't. I don't know. But I just feel like I'm tired. I just feel like there's a cloud over me. I just feel like there's an energy around me that when I make the choice, I make the choice that will hurt me. And here's the thing. We can get so used to vampiric energy. We can get so used to being treated poorly by others and not expecting much from ourselves and not connecting with the energy of joy and love and peace within us that the, the energy vibration that lowers us, that steals from us, starts to win. So be mindful about this during this time. Be mindful also about our emotions and passions just taking over, you know, or being very attracted. And we will be very attracted to people during this time who have really big emotions. Like we'll be thinking, oh my gosh, they're so sensitive. Oh my gosh, they're so in touch with their feelings. Oh my gosh, it's like, this is so cool. And they're an emotional wreck. It's like, it's a roller coaster ride that we soon realize I need to get off of. So just be mindful about that. Also, there's an element here of dealing with a bit of a Casanova, somebody who is very much like, can pull you in. Like, I don't care if you're a guy or a girl, right? Pull you in, be like, oh my gosh, this is so great. I'm, I'm so into you. And then just absolutely disappear. So just be mindful about this. And then they'll come up again. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. It's so great. And then absolutely disappear. And it's going to mess with your head. You don't need it. So just be mindful. We're also going to feel like everything's moving super, super slow. Cherish it while it's moving slow. Because once it starts picking up, it's not going to slow down. It's like it's going to be one thing after another after another that's going to lead us to our fire, to our tenacity, and into our strength. Our strength, Gemini, is not the brute force. I'm so strong. Look at my big muscles type of thing. Or look at the sports car I drive. Or look at the fancy address I have. It is going to be the strength of it's going to be the strength of love. I know that sounds so cheesy, but I always think of my great grandma. And I know if you've been here before, you're going to be like, oh, Dean, I know about your great grandma. But I always think of my great grandma when I see the card of strength. My great grandma, my grandma, my mom, some of the strongest people I have ever had the privilege of knowing. And they are so strong. But if you looked at my great grandma, and why I always use her as an example, because when I knew her, she was in her 90s. And she was so strong. She was so feisty. She was so vibrant. But if you looked at her, you knew she couldn't bench press, you know, a car. You know, she couldn't do, you know, these weird, these weird squats. She couldn't do those things. But she stood firm and, and powerful within herself. She was a force and she was brilliant. And that's what we need to be in our lives. A force of love, a force of connection, a force of joy, a force of beauty. That's what strength is. I also always think of Thecla. You know, in the Gnostic tales, we have Thecla and Paul. And I highly recommend you Google Thecla and Paul, Gnostic, Gnostic texts, because it's such a cool story. Because the story of Thecla and Paul, they go out and they're apostolicizing, right? And this is back in the day when women could be apostles alongside men. And whether you believe in that or not, it doesn't really matter. It's just a really cool story. And what happens is she... They always get found out, right? The Romans are always there being like, you guys you gotta go to the Colosseum, you gotta be executed, you are you are prophetizing this like, you know, banned religion, you can't do it. And Paul always manages to escape. Thecla is always the one dragged off in chains. So in her first test, in her first like damnation thing as she's being dragged off, is that she's going to be fed to the lions. But what happens? All the female lions gather around her and protect her from the male lions. And the Romans in the Colosseum are like, dude, that's some weird stuff right there. Let her go. They're like, let her go. Let her go. And she gets freed. Then she's arrested again. And again, they say, okay, now your punishment as you're dragged off in chains is to be fed to the sharks. She's up, you know, on this podium thing. And she's going to be fed to the sharks. The, the drop, like the trap door is going to come down. She's going to be fed in. A lightning bolt comes down kills all the sharks, hits the water, kills all the sharks. She then jumps into the water and baptizes herself. Fierceness. She's fierceness. She is taking her, her power. She's taking herself and she's saying, I'm moving forward for me. And that's what we need to do. That's strength. She didn't sit there and yell and scream and fight and, and do all this stuff, but mountains moved for her because she stood in her, in her strength. Being aware of this, 
is going to be so important during this time to be aware of our strength, to be aware of ourselves. It moves us to our subconscious spirit message, which here is context. Okay. Don't judge things instantaneously. Look at the context of it. Look at the deeper, you know, understanding of it. That's going to be important. It moves us then to our subconscious chakra message. It's the heart chakra. It's play. We need to embrace play. We need to embrace joy. We're going to think, oh, that's so silly. Oh, that's so silly. What does play have to do? We don't play as human beings unless we feel safe. So being able to embrace play is going to be an important, beautiful thing for us. Knowing that there's a blockage in our heart chakra, tapping our heart, which can also tap our vagus nerve, you know, down from our collarbone to our chest. You can find, I know it sounds really weird, but you can find that if you do that, you might get like a little burpee, okay? Because it's releasing all the, the stuck energy within you. So just be mindful about that. It moves us then to the energy to be mindful of. We are, we need to be mindful of the fool. We are afraid of people thinking we are foolish. We are afraid of people not fully seeing us. We are afraid of taking risks because what if they fail? We are afraid of not taking risks because what if we like, you know, waste away our lives? We are, we're afraid. The first step is going to be the hardest and the second step isn't going to be that much easier. So just being aware of that, that we're going to be afraid, but feel the fear and do it anyway. It moves us then to our subconscious spirit message. There is something that forces us to throw down what we've been carrying. Something that forces us to say, no, I'm not doing this anymore. No, I'm not, you know, being pushed down this way anymore, or carrying these burdens anymore, or being overwhelmed like this anymore. And that is going to be a beautiful shift and a beautiful claiming of power. Yeah, but it comes to a completion of a cycle when it comes to our passion and when it comes to what we desire. All right. All right, Gemini. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power, intensity, and beauty of this time and of ourselves. And please note that this meditation and healing will be accompanied by a loud sound. So take a nice deep breath in exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Gemini. May blessings and prosperity always be with you. I love you all. God bless. Bye.